Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is a tough one, uh, something you never want to see. And while it's by far not the worst case scenario, it's still tough. And honestly, watching it play out in real time was surprisingly emotional. Or maybe it's just me. I'm not afraid to admit that I can be a bit sentimental about these things. But um, yeah, let's take a look at this thing together and let me know what you guys think. So March 6, 2023 was going to be the day. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, was going to launch its H-3 rocket. H-3 was designed to be Japan's new flagship vehicle for sending satellites into orbit and was designed to replace the H-2A, the country's current active rocket. The H-3, built by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, was meant to bolster Japan's domestic spaceflight capabilities and cost about $1.47 billion over the 20 years they spent developing it. And Japan has had a pretty robust space program over the past few decades. They are part of the global partnership that manages the International Space Station, and its astronauts routinely serve aboard the space station. So H-3 was designed to help them level up the frequency of their space flights. Japan is also planning to use the launch vehicle to shuttle cargo to the lunar environment, specifically to assist in the construction of the planned space station around the moon. H-3 stands at about 200 feet tall, and for this launch, it had two solid propellant side boosters on either side, but can have up to four boosters, depending on the payload. And aboard was a satellite, the exact cargo that H-3 was designed to carry, the Advanced Land Observation Satellite 3. So on March 6th, after a previous aborted attempt, H-3 was scheduled to have its debut launch. And launch she did. Now, I've got the JAXA footage of the launch and everything that happened afterwards, so I'll show you guys a bit of that launch now. On. Oh. All systems go for launch. Main engine start. Toid boosters ignition and lift off. So as you can see, it seemed to go pretty smoothly, a successful launch. The boosters successfully separated. And so a few minutes in, we pick it up from a different CGI view. And H3 should be headed towards its second stage engine ignition, which is designed to push its mission cargo into a safe orbit. You can see uh, the altitude and the velocity. So we're traveling at more than 200 kilometers above underground. And on the left is um, the, uh, the speed per, uh, per hour. Um, so what that's, uh, uh, so it was uh, accelerated to 28,800 kilometers an hour eventually. And so uh, we are almost at, um, at the, the completion of ignition of first stage engine now. But it doesn't happen. And you can notice in the upper left-hand corner, the velocity of this rocket starts dropping. Uh, second stage engine uh, should um, ignition, but we're not heard the, the ignition start announcement as yet. But um, at ignition, at um, uh, 16 minutes 36 seconds, it will continue to um, uh, ignite uh, to take the satellite into the orbit. So um, we have seen the launch of um, the uh, H3 uh, launch vehicle, uh, test flight number one. So that in itself has, um, I suppose, um, a, uh, made me feel reassured. Oh, the part where they awkwardly cut to the hosts. Oof, that hurts. Maybe it's just because I can see it from the perspective of someone who's on camera, but I feel, I can definitely feel them thinking something isn't right here. And then they basically say as much. It looks like um, the velocity is coming down. It's um, coming down less than uh, 10,000 um, the kilometers an hour. I don't know whether this data is correct or not, but it seems that the, the velocity is coming down, and that is what we are able to confirm on the FIB. But um, is this the actual data, or is it um, based on the, the system? We need to check. 
This is an announcement from the Takesaki Range Control Center to all launch operators and personnel. The second stage engine ignition has not been confirmed yet. We continue to confirm the situation. So yeah, you can just really hear it in both the announcer's voice and in the control center. Second stage engine is not confirmed. And they know this is not good. So they cut to this wide shot of the launch pad and they have this caption that pops up that basically says, checking status, please stand by. And then after about a minute of total silence, As was just announced, rocket had, could not uh, uh, complete its mission, so destruct command was sent. Uh, it, it was uh, decided that the rocket could not complete its mission, so destruct command was sent. And you can just hear it in the interpreter's voice. A self-destruct command was issued. It's just crazy to even think about. Some poor bastard having to press a button to blow up a rocket that cost over a billion dollars to develop that they now don't really have control of. The rocket's second stage was deliberately destroyed, most likely to ensure that its wreckage landed in the ocean, some place where it wouldn't threaten people or property. And with the rocket went the satellite. The debris rained down in the waters east of the Philippines, according to JAXA. And with that, the broadcast was cut abruptly short. So we cannot expect more news to come in. And so we would like to uh, conclude the live broadcast for the HSC uh, first uh, test flight. In a news conference the following afternoon, the space agency's president, Hiroshi Yamakawa, apologized for the failure and said that JAXA would carry out a thorough analysis and investigation to see what went wrong. And it does seem like they will build another H-3 rocket, but there has been some criticism of not just the failed launch of the rocket, but also the loss of the satellite aboard. The ALOS-3 satellite was a $200 million advanced imaging satellite and earlier in the week, retired Japanese astronaut Soichi Nogachi expressed his displeasure about the mishap over Twitter, saying, what is the necessity of putting a satellite on a test machine in the first place? He pointed out that JAXA has used dummy payloads in the past, and the Japan Times pointed to some government sources that claim that the second launch was actually done in haste, with a March 10th end-of-launch window looming. And Hirotaka Watanabe, a professor at Osaka University with expertise in space policy, said, quote, Unlike the previous cancellation and postponement, this time it was a complete failure. This will have a serious impact on Japan's future space policy, space business, and technological competitiveness. Ouch. But JAXA seems undeterred. Their president reiterated in the news conference that, quote, our top priority is to do everything we can to find the cause and regain the trust in our rockets. We need to figure out what we should do to successfully achieve the next launch. And I don't hear any ifs in there. So I guess it remains to be seen what effect this will have on Japan's space program. I'm all for more players being in the game, so I hope this is just an opportunity to do things better rather than a catastrophic bump in the road for Japan. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Seeing this launch in real time was definitely heartbreaking, but you know, like anything, you, you walk away, you have a mull on it, figure out the lessons to be learned, and come back better. Good life advice, good space advice. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And as always, I will see you in the next video.